Hello, I'm Art by Jenny, or Jenny from Art by Jenny I should say, and today I'm going to colour in some leaves, holly leaves for Christmas because it's only a few months away now and I know shock horror it comes up so fast, but these are nice and quick and easy and you can just colour a whole heap of them in at once and then just cut them out and add them to all your cards and make them look like beautiful homemade cards. Okay, to start with I use the Kazaz alcoholic markers, the oh, alcohol art, alcohol ink art markers. Okay, it's a solvent based marker similar to Copics and a few others out there. Uh, these are our brand and they hold lots of ink and they last for ages and ages and ages while you colour ink. The Holly Stamp and a Distress Ink by Tim Holtz and Ranger. Now, first of all, I stamp the holly leaves on my Sovereign A5 smooth white paper, also by Kazaz, just so happens. And then we start off, oops, we start off colouring the base coat in in, in mint. I'll just show you some I prepared earlier. There you are. So they're coloured in mint and then spinach and some evergreen and a bit of moss. And then sometimes I use a bit of cricket and then I'll put some highlights in spinach and then that's it. No, and then I put another coat of mint over. But I don't always. It depends how they look after they've been blending because some end up a bit blotchy. But that could be good because they're art cards, so that's alright. And others blend up really beautifully. So I guess it depends on how much how much blending you do while you're colouring. So I'll show you. This is just how I do it. Everyone colours it differently. And as you practice, you'll find that you have different colours you like to use for different leaves. And you will also like to colour differently. Like some people colour in circles. Whoops. Sorry, just put my stuff down. Right, that's spinach. I'll just show you in spinach. Some people colour in circles like that, and I colour with little flicks because that way I get to have grain and direction in my colouring. Right, so if you go over this with the round bit, that will blend nicely. As it dries, it will go in together. Whereas this way, I get to do that. This still blends, it just has a different effect. And both have a use, like the rounded edge is like for if you've got big, um, big spaces like dresses or sky. And the other one is if you have like clothing and you want to put a bit of uh, texture into the clothing, or in this case, leaves. So we'll start. Start off with mint, not moss. There's mint. Mint. And I will colour in the leaves. For this type, for the base coat, I don't use the flicky, flicky, flicky method. All I do is colour it in. And you can go like that, or that, or you can take care and do a bit at a time. That one's a bit messy. Never mind, we'll have another go. So the colour is a bit better. Neat. I do like it to be neat. But all of these are getting cut out, so the lines aren't such an issue. And I'll go over all of the lines after they're cut out with the blender pen, like a blender tool or a marker. Usually I use the distress markers. Um, there we go, another couple here. I'm not sure exactly how much you can see until I press stop on the... See, this is rough and ready, this one. And each different way of colouring will have a different effect on how the leaf blends. Now I use spinach. And do one side of the leaf. Just for a bit of shadow or 
just because that's the side I fancy colouring at the time. And I take a bit more care with this layer because this is layer will show and as it dries it will blend and we'll go over it after in a minute with another colour and each layer will blend into the other one as you go in other words for blending is colouring or rendering uh, when I was at high school we had to do uh, technical drawing which I absolutely loved which was drawing, I just love drawing. And I had to do a car, so I did this groovy red car and rendered all the all the um, panels and the chrome and got it all to look so shiny. And it's a similar type of technique as this. The only difference is this is textures and I had to do that in pencils. I didn't have these around then. Imagine having this stuff then. Oh, I would have loved it. So anyway, back to me and the leaves. This is evergreen that, you, that I'm using now. I'm just using the other side of the leaf. I noticed I missed a leaf, but that's okay because not every leaf has to have the spinach. Okay. Then I'll go over it again in, uh, what am I doing? Moss. Moss is a pretty green. So we just want a little bit, because it can be too pretty, a bit too limey, because holly leaves are a real neutral green. Some of them have a bit of red in them, but it depends, it's art, so you don't have to make it really realistic. Depends what you want it to look like, doesn't it? I get a bit blotchy when I'm doing this colour, because I just want it to highlight what I'm doing, and I just want a bit of the colour. I don't want the whole leaf to be. So it's a bit of a real limey, greeny, grassy greeny colour. Now, Cricut is a gorgeous little, really green colour. Of course they're green. It's green. Anyway, this one I just tend to do a little bit on the tips where the sun would normally hit the leaves, just to blend that in a bit. really really fussy as per usual so cover up all the white that bit there and as you can see like with this one here it actually blends out some of the dark colors so to get that to blend again we go back to the original color the mint and push all the color back in and tell it to behave and blend nicely. And you'll see this one in particular, you'll see that line will evaporate and blend back into each other. Now what colours you use for holly leaves or any leaf in particular is going to be completely up to you. With 72 colours in this collection of markers, you've got plenty to choose from with colour. And if you're going to do autumn leaves, you're going to have to use all those beautiful browns and reds and oranges. There we go. Nearly done. How's that looking? Blending. I think I went a bit heavy today. Never mind. Okay, back to the spinach. One more thing. If you wait for this to dry, this will be better, but... As I'm in a hurry and doing it all at once, I'm just going to do the veins of the leaves and the stems. And just draw it half up the stem, I mean half up the leaf. It's just to emphasise that the leaf has a bit of stem in it. I'm sure there's millions of YouTube videos out there with colouring in on them. So watch them all, have a play, and see which ones you like to do. And as you play more, um, as you play more, you'll just get better practiced and develop your own way of colouring. Now, when I colour berries, 
this is rouge I always go in circles I just always have done I find if I go straight up and down I end up with dents and they're not surround at all okay also with the berries I always I like to use either pomegranate or mulberry or wine and it just adds a bit of depth to the berry to make it look like it's round it's just like a little flick just at the bottom okay like as if it's in shadow <clears throat> okay hopefully you say that if you have any questions visit my website at artbyjenny.com.au or my facebook page at artbyjenny.gg of rb and I uh, hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope um, it's helped. Just one final look at the Christmas card that I made with these leaves. So you can see once they're cut out, they will have a better definition and they'll look much better than they do when with all the bleeding all outside of the edge. So enjoy. Happy colouring and happy creative day.